In this video, I'm looking at the same data set we used in the previous video. And here I'm drawing an ROI around the particle of interest. And I'll use that region to align the data and also to crop just that area. I'll then export this as an in situ data set. That means the data will still be in DM4 format with full bit depth, full resolution, and metadata and without any lossy compression. Here I'm just adding a descriptive name so that I'll remember what I did to this data. Now it's going to go through frame by frame, drift correcting and cropping the data before saving each frame in DM format. I've increased the playback speed here, but this just takes a few minutes to process this 3.6 gigabyte section of the data set. Now that that's done processing, I can open the process dataset with GMS. And here's my new crop dataset, and I can play that back with the same in situ player. I can see right at the beginning that it's not crystalline, it's melted. Uh, and then I can see the crystallization take place. I can also export the same data, uh, but save it directly to an MP4 video by selecting video here in the IS editor. Now I can choose the frame rate and add a timestamp or a scale bar if I want. I'll again give it a descriptive name, and again it will go through frame by frame and save this, but this time to a compressed MP4 format. The compression here is lossy, uh, so not all the information is retained, but the compression using the H.264 standard is really quite nice and results in good video quality with a slightly smaller file size. But since there is some small information loss, I would not try to go back and analyze data from an MP4 video. Still, it is really useful for putting videos into conference presentations or sharing quickly with colleagues, since the file size is smaller and it can be played back with just about any device or software that plays videos. In this case, my initial full data set was 49 gigabytes, and my cropped MP4 was just 51 megabytes.